Let us come together now for our world healing prayer. The great need of our world, and we seek to still that we come into a place of peace and deep stillness, drawing closer to God in prayer. Let us open our hearts to the power, love, and wisdom of God. By the Christ light and love in our hearts, we call to the great angels of the Christ star circle. Being still. And now, with all the will of our minds, with all the love of our deepest hearts, we send forth the light. We send it forth as a great star of light, a blazing star, a star of the Christ light, lifting all hearts into the By all the power of Christ within our hearts, we send forth the light to the world. We hold our beautiful planet in the healing light of the Christ star. We hold within this healing ray the soil, the waters of the earth, and the air, and all nature, especially the human and animal kingdoms. the soul of the people of the Americas. May the light of the Christ star shine through the hearts and minds of the people of the Americas to bring healing to mankind and a deep reverence for all life. Let us hold within this great healing star anyone known to us personally who is in need of help or healing. Silently, we name them now. And see them radiant within this beautiful healing light. Amen, amen, amen. Now we continue with our healing work with our healing circle, and we thought on this Sunday, for this particular healing circle is going to be the whole area, Ecuador, all the countries affected, So now, let us go right back into our heart centers as we open our hearts to the Christ power, wisdom, and love. And together we call upon the angels of healing to draw close. We come into the soft radiance of this love as we focus and hold the healing light of the Christ star, we see an immense Christ star over Ecuador in all the countries and the regions affected by the earthquakes and also any earth changes. Guiding light flooding those areas. With hearts full of love and gratitude, we give our grateful thanks. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you all. 
And Sylvia selected a wonderful reading, and I think it's very timely for our upcoming changes. And it's excerpts from the book, Seeking Serenity, A Path to Peace. And Weidegel says, we would lead you to the peace of heavenly life. Without this inner peace of the heavenly life, you live in a state of stress and anxiety and fear. Who are so close to your spirit always, work to dispel all fears and anxieties to which you on earth are subject. When you're in trouble, you become tense. And because of the tension, whatever you are suffering from is far more painful and the suffering increases. When there is conflict in the mind, there is no peace in the soul. But when the spirit controls the mind and the nervous system, then peace and tranquility rule. The love, the light in your heart is pure spirit and human life must be guided by the Spirit. Once you can relax and relinquish your problems to God, all conflict ceases and health and wholeness and holiness return. The experiences of your life real life, of your spirit, of your real self. You are part of the great white spirit and as soon as you know that this, not only with your mind, but with your innermost feelings, with your heart and your soul and your mind, you will feel safe and at peace, at peace with your circumstances, at peace every day of your life. Now these are not merely fine words, but what you feel is the simple truth of the life of Christ in you. You may be human, but you're also divine, even as Christ was. And it is for you on earth to allow the golden of the Father, Mother, God. This is eternal life, and that life is infinite, life in which no soul can ever grow weary, because it is it is the life which is continually renewed. Therefore, the soul can go on and on and on, never wearying, always refreshed, and always recreating itself. God will give you strength to remain constant and true. Do not be tempted. never fail to trust in God's love. And we know how hard it is to pursue the darkened path. You have to walk in darkness to accept the condition in which you find yourselves, trusting in the love of God, trusting that the eternal arms are always around you and that your earthly experiences come as a wise purpose. We know you all will say, this is all very well, White Eagle. We believe what you tell us, but how is your promise going to affect? Some of you have been through sorrow and separations, anxious on account of your loved ones, confused in mind and heavy in heart. But we are pointing away towards your goal. And when your vision is fixed upon that goal, you will acquire a different emotional attitude to your companions and the problems of everyday life. You and we know that eternal light is the solvent of all problems. But humankind does not make the effort to rise in thought and aspiration to the life which is light and joy and tranquility because contacting this light requires the subduing of the lower nature which is of the earth beloved brethren the path you lead is not easy we know and because the brothers who've passed onward into the light 
understand the disappointments and the hardships of your mortal life, but they come back with great longing to help, to give you knowledge of your own inward powers, and to tell you of the beautiful states of life which await you. In due time, no effort is ever wasted. Keep on keeping on your path, and we promise you it is leading to heaven, to a life full of bliss and peace, quite beyond your imagination. You, just a thought from you, a prayer, a hope, and we are with you. We ask you to see the power of the eternal spirit working throughout your life. Think in terms of the smoothness of the power of God in your life, in your health, and in your affairs. And do your best within your capacity and see this beautiful power of love, the love of a father for his children, working through your affairs. Do your best and do not worry about tomorrow, but be calm and patient. spirit holds the plan of your life and we can truly say to you that good cometh light cometh out of darkness light comes with the rising of the sun the sunlight on your soul and what may seem sorrow to you at first will in due course be revealed as a great opportunity because through your disappointment through your sorrow the seed of the spiritual harvest will be sown. God never hurries. Be patient. All is well. And as you are patient, you will learn too of the infinite tenderness and the wisdom and love of God. And this knowledge will bring the assurance that all is well. If we could only impress upon you at all you all that there's the most certain and definite path of eternal progress before you and that all works together for good you would find that deep peace in life for which you long amen good morning thank you denise that was lovely as jane said time ago i well remember the words if only we could have the reading again and i would love to have that reading again but instead, you're going to have to listen to me. So, abiding heavenly peace. A state of being that we all wish for, not only for ourselves, but of all of God's creation. So how do we achieve this path to peace? It can be done. Let us return to the reading for a moment. The experiences of your life are to help you grow in consciousness of your real life, of your spirit, of your real self. You are part of the great white spirit, and as soon as you know most feelings with your heart and your soul and your mind, you will feel safe and at peace, at peace with your circumstances at peace every day of your life. It seems that something is always being asked of us, doesn't it? But that is how we grow. Yes, all these challenges are sent to help us with our soul's growth to achieve that inner peace. But there are times when we do not always go through life with equanimity with the human part temporarily displacing the divine part. Sometimes, and I have heard this said to me, there is no peace in their souls. I know because I have been there and it's a lonely, lonely place. God does love us, always has and always will. As we are assured that God is there, so is a full supporting cast of those in the world of spirit devoted to helping us reach our goal. 
as we aspire to find that peace, we can rest secure in the fact they cannot do it for us. So how do we achieve that inner peace when life seems to be throwing us nothing but curveballs? Maybe, probably, definitely, the one way we could begin is by looking into ourselves. No, we do not need to go to extremes, but an honest self-examination of our behavior and attitudes we may find very helpful. Perhaps we find that it, oh, we haven't always been as kind and as, as thoughtful as we might have been. Perhaps we could have done better at times. We probably know when that has happened, but I don't think there is any need to wear sackcloth and ashes. Yes. liberating and thus we are able to find ourselves remaining calm and steady in any given situations sometimes under very difficult circumstances with perseverance we can find that place of peace and once found we discover that we are able to view life differently with a better understanding of ourselves and of others now we believe has hurt us, who has been unkind to us, accused us of something of which we are entirely innocent. This does happen, and perhaps is the hardest of all situations to overcome. How do we retain our peace when someone or something unpleasant has occurred and upset us? Our teacher has some sage words that may help. The master would have you give way in the little things that are unimportant. Give way to each other on the little things. Be not attentive to yourself. Be strong for the right when right is a matter of principle. Get a clear and balanced perspective so that you can see all things truly. If you follow this rule, You will bring greater blessings to others. A great soul houses no smallness or pettiness. He also says not to make mountains out of molehills. If we can stand back, distance ourselves from the hurt, perhaps try to understand what the other person is all about. Why are they behaving?
He's full of love. And he raises his hands in blessing and would hold us close to his heart. And he offers us now the bread of life to take and eat, feeling the comfort of that life, the strength. And he would offer us the wine from the goblet from his heart of the spirit that we may be strong, that we may feel this love, this light, this peace. As our Lord Christ gradually recedes from our vision, we also realize that it is time for us to return to the physical plane of being. So quietly and gently, we begin to feel ourselves back in this temple of the Golden Rose. Feet on earth, head in the heavens, and arms raised wide in brotherhood for all life. Amen. Amen. Amen.